Ta a tasteful place. Anybody here from, from Dallas or Fort Worth? This is the Dallas Arboretum. Have y'all had a, plant, a chance to visit it? They have put in this really gorgeous, beautiful, edible landscape or edible garden there. It's called A Tasteful Place. And um, I was there, uh, we were there in February and got to go uh, and see this garden. And uh, funny that I was, um, I was gonna be talking about Asian greens for this talk anyway, and they had so many Asian greens planted in this garden. Uh, but anyway, if you have a chance, it's really gorgeous. And I'm sure they've taken the Asian greens out by now, and they are, you know, they're just keeping a stock of plants. They're gonna try to keep it so it's always beautiful. It's always, you know, really pretty to look at, and it's always producing. So, and I think uh, San Antonio, oh, San Antonio also has a really beautiful edible garden at their, uh, at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. Another place to go visit. So Asian greens, have y'all been, have y'all grown some like bok choy, Chinese cabbage, some of these good. So you know that these vegetables grow really well in Texas. They're really great, like uh, early, growing in the fall into winter or growing in late winter into spring. Um, and the thing that's so, that's so good about them is that they produce in about 40 to 60 days. I mean, you plant the seed, and if you're going to be harvesting them for baby greens, which a lot of people are growing them, that you know, they're growing them for that now. So if you harvest them for baby greens, you could be harvesting something in about 40 or 50 days. Uh, so this Violetta Pak Choi, that was one that was growing um, at the Tasteful Place at the Dallas Arboretum, and it's gorgeous, so pretty. This Tokyo Bacana Chinese cabbage, it's a little bit different. It's got an open habit. The leaves are kind of soft and ruffled and uh, real mild flavor. And then uh, this uh, one on the bottom is red choy, and it's just growing in a bluebell in a half-gallon container. So just to say, you know, you can grow these vegetables anywhere, uh, and especially these ones that are more of a smaller stature. Um, oh, I didn't have the... Oh, and also I did want to say about Asian greens, um, Kitazawa Seed Catalog, and that should be on that handout that you have, but Kitazawa is a great place. A lot of seed catalogs are carrying um, Asian green, you know, different varieties of Asian greens, but Kitazawa has been, uh, they're out in California, and they've been doing it for, oh, a long, long time, years, 30, 40 years they've been out there. So they're a really good source if you want to try some new or unusual um, Asian greens. Um, they, they just do really well here in, here in our cool season. And then cauliflower, I just put this in in case some people are not aware that cauliflower comes in different colors. How many of y'all have grown some colored cauliflower? And how many of y'all have grown this Romanesco, that one? Yeah, okay, good. So that is that, that spiral, the one, the chartreuse spirals, that's called Romanesco cauliflower. It's an Italian heirloom. There are some hybrid varieties. In fact, this one is called Veronica. It's a really interesting uh, cauliflower to grow, and it's pretty easy. It doesn't really seem to be very fussy. And then there's also these uh, other color, colored cauliflowers. This one in the picture is cheddar, but I put in the handout, cheddar has now been replaced, and this happens all the time that, you know, you find a vegetable variety that you really like, and then it comes along, gets replaced, and then you gotta find out the new name. But the new orange one is called Orange Flame. Um, but it, it is, uh, has higher levels of vitamin A in it. So uh, that's, and I understand, I've read that this orange cauliflower was just uh, discovered in Canada, just like a, a random mutation. And they, they took that cauliflower and sent it to Cornell, and then Cornell did some breeding work on it and uh, you know, developed a hybrid that's stable and it has this, these higher uh, vitamin A levels. So um, that's the orange one. And then, of course, the white is Snow Crown. And then Vita Verde is that green, um, uh, the green one. And then Violet Queen is that purple one. Another really great purple one is Graffiti. And George and Mary grew Violet Queen and Graffiti. They've been around for a long time. And I've also read that one of the newest things now is to plant your cauliflower closer together, like 12-inch spacing, because usually you would give cauliflower maybe, maybe two feet. 
but you, you space it closer together and then you just harvest the heads when they're really small. So you have little miniature gourmet cauliflower. This is, uh, so that's Kiva's Iowa Seed Company and these are just a few of the, um, uh, some other uh, Asian greens that you can grow, this golden streak mustard. Now mustard, now, this one is a little milder in flavor, but most mustards are pretty spicy, a little bit hot sometimes. But if you cook them, you put them in a stir fry or something, then they'll be a little, a little less pungent. And then rosy pa uh, pak choy. And joy choy is one, uh, just the standard, you know, white bok choy or pak, pak choy. And you can harvest that in a baby size, or you can let it grow into just a regular big size, the full size.